hours later. What's up guys, how you all doing? Cosmic Carry here, rolling out in my tier 8 German TD Varamatar Borsig, leading to the almighty tier 10 Waffendrager of E100. And uh, this, uh, it has been confirmed that this tank will be removed this coming year, uh, in the year of our Lord, uh, 2017. It will be removed and it will be replaced by the Grill 15. So those of you that have yet to experience playing in this dumbass... <laughs> derpy nutty crazy you know auto loading machine go ahead you know grind your way get one because it's it's gonna be a, a you know a thing of the past it's gonna disappear into world of tank history and be replaced by the Gruel 15 which is just as much an op uh, beautiful tank but it, you know it's not an auto loader so it won't be around for much longer so if you want to get it get it now you know Anyhow, we're here to talk about the Ramatar Borsig. I wanted to discuss my, uh, you know, I had a recent game, I think it was in Westfield, where I managed to achieve 6k damage in um, in this tier 8 beast, even though it's, look, it's tiny, uh, in a tier 10 game. And, uh, you know, and I think I could have achieved so much more. And, uh, and that was running actually the 128 mil. Uh, this is the 150 mil, you know, and 100%. You know, I highly recommend the 128 mil. If you're grinding at this tank, you should run the 128 mil because that has better penetration, that has um, better accuracy, that has better reload. You know, you should run the 128 mil. But I'm not grinding. You know, there's kind of different types of tanks are caught based on the stage that you're in uh, when it comes to your World of Tanks career. You know, there's tanks that you're grinding and you kind of never really fully realize the full potential of the tank because that you don't ever get the, f the s all the desired skills and perks you need to make that tank OP to the max to max out its positives because you're grinding you know and you've only got up until I don't know seven tier seven eight you've only accumulated maybe one or two skills or perks because it's a brand new crew etc etc but the, then there's when you're at a stage like I'm at where you're going back and replaying golden oldies and uh, you, you're just playing in a tank just to play in a tank you know just to enjoy it maybe you want a free market maybe you just really have fond memories of playing in this tank and you couldn't wait to get back in into uh, said tank which is what's happening now you know when I played this tank the the tier 9 yeah you know but the, this tier 8 750 alpha with the 150 mil, you know, I always said to myself, you know, the 150 mil is a stupid ass derp gun. But if you could just make the tank work around the fact that you have a stupid ass derp gun, uh, you know, you could have some really kick ass high damage games. And here we are, what, a year or two later, <laughs> I'm finally getting back into playing this thing. And a lot of people out there will yell scumbag TD. And they would be justified in saying so. This is 100% a scumbag TD, but it cannot be helped. If you want to play this tank properly to the max, to the best of its abilities, you cannot be lit up because, you know, pretty much in every single game uh, in this tank, when you're lit up, you die. You know, it's literally, you can go five, four, three, two, one, you're dead. You know, somebody Amorax you this, that, da, da, da. It just doesn't have any armor. It doesn't have the hit points to su sustain any kind of damage. And uh, and you're an easy target. You know, wherever you get shot, you're going to get penned. So you can't get lit up. Hence, you're a dirty, filthy scumbag. Because you don't want to get lit up. If you're playing this tank correctly, you are a dirty, filthy scumbag. Me, myself included. 100% when I'm in this tank I feel like a dirty filthy scumbag why is that I mean take a look look at my crew I kind of mentioned this in the Westfield video in the description I have six cents I have bro but more importantly I have brothers in arms camel green fun and muffled shot I do have silent driving that's to do with camo as well. But that's to do with my camo factor when I'm on the move. Not when I'm actually shooting or sitting in the bush, etc, etc. But these are the, the important ones. When you're firing your gun in the Rymotai Borsig. Brothers in Arms, that kind of boosts 
everything by you know five percent i'm not sure camo is going to in increase your camo factor green farm is going to increase your camo factor muffle shot is going to increase your your uh, uh, it's going to decrease the increase in uh, your camo factor when you fire your gun you know it's not going to drop dramatically and not only that you know I, I, you combine that with uh, my equipment which is you know the camouflage net and uh, not coded optics what's it called the vents you, you I can't get vents on this tank because it's got an open top canopy but you can't uh, combine the, all my skills and perks with, with the camo net you know 25% uh, increase the uh, camo factor or, or the decrease whichever way you want to look at it but also um, I run chocolate you know I run chocolate as well uh, which is kind of odd on a tier 8 tank to run chocolate usually you know you see chocolate uh, or food consumables only run on tier 10 machines but I have yet to lose any money in this tank uh, you know because of this the setup that I have you know it guarantees or almost guarantees like high damage games it really does so so chocolate boosts everything so I have a 100% fully operational scumbag TD to the max and and in my defense I would say you know I do not play TDs as a crutch uh, vehicle type if you know what I mean you know I don't play only TDs in my defense I would say uh, I get a pass in playing this scumbag TD because I play you know plenty of medium tanks I play plenty of heavies I play TDs yes I do uh, but um, but I, I play plenty of you know every vehicle type. I think I think mediums like account for like thirty five percent of my games. Heavies and TDs like twenty twenty to twenty five percent each. So I have a good mix of different vehicle types. You know I don't have uh, ninety percent games played only in TDs. You know so you're not really a World of Tanks player when if you know what I mean. And 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 truth be told, I'm not putting down any players out there you know because me myself i think that like the first year i played uh world of tanks i didn't touch mediums you know now it's my most played class but in my first year i didn't touch mediums at all because you need there is some skill involved there you know and in no way shape or form am i saying i'm a highly skilled medium player you know when it when the stars align i have a great game 100 percent, and i upload it on youtube but th th there's some skill involved there, you know, to f figuring out how to flank, how, co how to properly flank, when to make that move, you know, etc., etc. And, and, and until I figured that out, it's yeah, I, I, I just didn't touch mediums. And um, but now it's my most played class because it's, it's so much fun. But right now I'm in the scumbag TD. <laughs> I'm in the scumbag TD. Sits in the bushes. Blast my I blast my 150 mil cannon <laughs> and I don't even get lit up you know and I don't even get lit up because ladies and gentlemen boys and girls with the current setup that I have you know with my supplies you know with my chocolate and my equipment and my skills and perks my camel values are equal to that of an E25 you know pretty much uh, a little bit below you know I think uh, that this tank has like a camel factor of about 20 points whatever the hell that means and the e25 is very similar and when you add on all the little bits and bobs and bells and whistles and gizmos that i add on uh, currently have on this tank it triples the camel factor to about 60 65 percent and the same happens with the e25 if you add on the same stuff that i do on the rheumatoid borsig but the thing is the thing is, and this is very, very interesting, and you know the E25 is the tiny little cockroach tank known for its camel values, <coughs> known for taking pot shots at the enemies uh, from a distance. And, you know, it's like, who's shooting at me? It's an E25 hiding in the bushes. You never see that tank. So this tank has the same camo char characteristics. Uh, keep in mind, I have camo on the tank as well, so that increases as well. Uh, so this tank has the same camel values as an E25, but as soon as the E25 kind of moves, because it doesn't have a turret, has to move its whole body, its whole chassis, you know, which it does, often has to, uh, 
you know, it loses, you know, all these benefits of having, you know, the camo as equipment and, uh, you know, all the skills and perks. It loses, everything drops because it's not no longer stationary. The Rheinmetall Borsig has a rotating turret and you'll see uh, um, in future games me just sitting there and I'm just rotating my turret and I'm not losing any you know there are no drops in camel value so you could say that this tank has even better you know camel characteristics camel values than an E25 yeah. so that's very very interesting I am do apologize for being so technical and so nerdy and so boring <laughs> But anyhow, what the 150 mil? We haven't even discussed the gun. Why am I going for the 150 mil? Because uh, you know, because I have all these camo values, <laughs> all these bits and bobs. I can get away with, you know, firing this big, massive gun, and a lot of times I will not get lit up. You know, and not only that, because I have these really fantastic camo values, I can get a little bit closer shall we say than i normally would um in order to make the accuracy um looking at the wrong one in order to make that accuracy work for me in order to, uh, so the 0 0.4 accuracy you know works less against me because we take a look at the 128 uh 246 pen 490 damage uh the 150 is 215 pen 750 damage so i'm trying to make the pen work for me i'm trying to make that accuracy that crap accuracy 0 0.4 work for me uh 0 0.35 on the 128 and uh aim time it's never an issue on a long reloading td because you you're you're sitting in a bush and you're getting ready for your next shot so you've got plenty of time to aim you know it's it's never really a, a problem but 215 pen is not end of the world, you know. It's a little bit below average for tier 8 TDs. But the TDs always have uh, the best average pen when it comes to the different classes. When you compare it to the tier 8 heavies, when you compare it to the tier 8 uh, mediums, you know. So 250 pen, we can most definitely work with that. Uh, this tank fires heat. Uh, for premium, 334 pen. Heat is not my choice, uh, you know, number one choice. I much prefer APCR, but, you know, whatever. The HE, I've yet to experience the full potential of the HE on this tank. You know, I really want to try out the HE because you can see 85 pen, which is very decent, 950 damage, which, uh, and it, you can go up to, you know, 1,188, you know, that is fantastic. So, CDCs, watch out. <laughs> but anyhow, let's get into some gameplay. So, the, the aim here, it's kind of like, for those of you uh, that have been here around uh, for a long time on my channel, it's kind of like me experimenting with the Death Star and the Hesh rounds. I went through this experimental stage where I was experimenting with the different shells on Death Star what should be your preferred choice how did these work how did they work etc etc so that's what i'm doing here i'm trying out the borsig i'm I, I think this tank has real potential with the current setup that i have uh to do a lot a lot of damage but we shall see okay 150 mil rhymatile borsig dragon's ridge uh the uh, the matchmaking is tier 8, tier 7, and a few tier 6s thrown in. Uh, with this gameplay, you're going to see me treating the game, uh, treating the Borsig um, as if it were a medium, or not really as if it were a medium. I would say it's my medium experience kind of kicking in. It's me appreciating the fact that I'm in a tank that has really high camo factor that has a rotating turret which is unusual for a TD and uh, and my medium experience kind of coming into use you know I'm not sitting in the back and simply 
uh, you know, hiding in the bush and taking pot shots at the bad guys. There's hardly any sniping, uh, I think, you know, in this in this actual game. And, uh, and yeah, you can see, you know, 0 0.4 accuracy at long range. Um, it it just it it really does just doesn't work. There you go. And um, but more more so than anything in this game, it's my 750 alpha uh, versus the tank that I'm up against. That's the main um, you know thing that's going on. That's when I'm when I'm taking on an opponent. I know I'm going to inflict 750 alpha if I pen, you know, again with accuracy. I'm, I managed to pen, don't get me wrong, and I appreciate the pen, but I, you know, and I didn't think I could pen the top of his turret, uh, so I didn't even bother aiming, but lo and behold, that's where the shot went. So as we move around, uh, move over here into the middle, I'm being escorted by a Panther 2 up ahead of me, uh, behind me is a 8015, I think it's called, and, uh, and um, uh, is it 88, 8015? I haven't got a clue. It's here 8. And there's a heavy behind me. I'm not sure what the heavy is. Black Prince takes a shot. Plenty of foliage between myself and the Black Prince. Don't even get lit up. That's the beauty of this tank. Uh, even though I blast out, uh, you know, 150mm cannon. And as I move over here, um, I'm going to get lit up. I'm not sure. Is it the KV-2? I don't think it was the KV-2. Possibly maybe it was the IS-6 up here to my right, but I don't want to get blasted by the KV-2, that was my first thinking, first thought, and uh, so I decided, okay, let's take on this IS-6, me and the Panther 2, but the Panther 2 chickens out, and I watch him hightail and run, and the uh, IS-6 possibly maybe here is thinking, you know, Borsig, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, but he doesn't count on the fact that I've got two buddies behind me. And they're gonna, you know, get some nice shots into him. He takes his shot. I'm fully prepared for that, and I place a nice shot into his belly and a pretty decent alpha roll. And um, and I prepare to do rinse and repeat. You know, the same again. Uh, but he does. I believe he gets taken out here. And there you go. He gets taken out. So decent encounter. Haven't lost any hit points, but as I'm creeping up here, that you know, there's a danger here as I'm pushing up here that I'm gonna I'm gonna get shot by uh, the red that are that are in e two and three, because that's that's basically where I would be right now. You know, uh, I cannot tell you the amount of high damage games where I place myself in e two and three, and I get shots on target. As the uh, you know, as the reds are hovering around this area, and I, I don't get lit up because obviously the the two TDs that are in play, you know, the D4, D5 area, you can see one pulling back there, and one has remained to engage. There, there they are, you know, E2, E3. So I decide, okay, if I'm gonna get shots on those guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull into the village here and use the village as cover, possibly maybe you know. Pop in, in and out of cover, uh, but the, the, these guys, there's quite a few reds over there, you know, taking on this TD. The danger is they can drop down to our base, cap our base, win the game, you know, because this is tier eight, and there's always, you know, it's a higher probability, possibility of that happening than saying tier ten games where, you know, most of the time people will fight to the the end, most of the time. But um, there, there is that danger. That TD gets taken out now. Now I'm dis just deciding what to do. I'm not sure what to do. Uh, set my eyes on this uh, AT-15. Is it AT-15? Shame on me. AT-15. And uh, it's you know you need to pen that thing either in the you know the, the turret or or the side. Are you going to get a bounce? So I, de I decide, okay, I'm not lighting anybody up. I, I was sat there momentarily, momentarily, uh, momentarily and uh, I let my uh, Binox kick in, but I didn't light up anything. And here comes the AT-15. I'm not going to pen that. He needs to turn ever so slightly, just a bit more. You can see me waiting, 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 waiting. And there it is. Okay, that's good. Yeah. And I get a nice juicy high roll. 808. 
and uh, but a, a medium shows up in the vicinity and it's a motherland and notice here he's just like what is it 80 meters away from me my camo neck just kicks in just before the shot I take the shot and I don't even get lit up that is the the beauty of the Borsig the brokenness of the Borsig and they're capping our base and this is what I was mentioning before there's there's a danger that they're gonna cap our base and it uh, looks like there's a little duel going on between a light tank and a medium on our base. In the meantime, AT-15, I need to just take my time, take my time. And there you go, that, that, that alpha, that alpha that I have, you know, we trade and he loses half his hit points. And, uh, you know, he, he barely go, you know, you know what I'm saying. So the, the second AT-15 also pumps a shot into me. Again, no big deal. Well, not no big deal. And I do sustain some damage in that fall. And I've lost about 60% of my hit points, which is pretty good, pretty decent. And I knew... It's just... There's nothing going to happen here. But he derps out, and I'm not sure what he was trying to do here. But... Good times, you know. I, I mustn't hit him in that, you know, the slope part. There's always a possibility it's going to bounce. There we go. And I take him out. So t two shots from me and I take him out. For him to take me out, it's, it's going to take, you know, much more than two shots. But right now, the priority is the base. The priority is the base. It needs to be reset. 30 seconds to go. Uh... Can I get there? You can see the TD to my right as well is rushing towards there, as is the medium behind me. And the, the, this, it was a bit of a precarious situation. And truth be told, I, it, I would cap as well. You can see, you know, they're kind of dropping like flies, absolutely 100%. And all that's left is this motherland. Yeah, take him out. And all that's left is a heavy, and uh, believe it or not, for the remainder of the game, there's six minutes to go. We search for the heavy, and we don't end up finding him. We cannot find him. <laughs> for the love of God, where was he? I'm going to clue. We just could not find him. And um, I have to mention the fact that you know I, I kind of mentioned the fact that the um, the. the in the title, I mentioned that the you know it's a broken tank, the broken Borsig, etc., etc. Uh, it's I mean, is it broken? Is it not broken? On PC, it's it's definitely overpowered. I I, I go out in this tank and I fully expect to get three, four, five k damage, and it's not that difficult. It's not that hard, you know, with the setup that I do have. And uh, but on PC, the, the view range of this thing has been nerfed not that i that 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 factor kind of affects me truth be told because i'm not really spotting anything for instance in this game and uh, but but there are plenty of games where i am spotting or i am sitting in the bush where i am you know but um but i, I think that the 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 gameplay that you're seeing is the fact that is the result of experience uh, playing in medium tanks, you know? Because I'm brawling, I'm ducking in and out of cover, I'm taking pot shots, and I'm, then I'm kind of pulling back and I'm pushing the tank to its limits. And there, like I mentioned before, there are plenty of battles where I am sitting in the bush, where I am attempting to snipe, where I am, you know, being passive, but. There are just as many games where I'm, I'm being very aggressive in this tank because I need to be because if I want to make the pen work on this tank, if I want to make the accuracy work on this tank, or pardon me, on the 150 mil, I have to be aggressive. I have to get in a little bit closer. And luckily for me, I have medium uh, tank experience underneath my belt. <coughs> but with regards to the PC, uh, the, P the 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 view range was nerfed to 360. I, I, I haven't got a clue when this happened. 
and uh, but the, the view range on this tack is 400 and that is you know I'll be to the max with the binox and the chocolate etc uh, etc et it kicks up my view range to 500 plus I think it's 530 540 possibly maybe and the max view range is 445 and I mentioned this before you know you, you can't cannot spot beyond that but what it does do you know going beyond 445 is it makes your view range up to 445 um, so much stronger you know so much potent so anyway let's fast forward 5k damage good to go and uh, uh, 1800 basic speed okay second game we are on sand river matchmaking is very similar this uh, gameplay is, is it, it is going to be a combination of sniping stroke uh, medium tank player in a you know TD I, I would say you know it, it's a combination of the two my main threat here is of course artillery as you can see there's two pieces of arty in the game so that that Pretty much that's my main threat, There's nothing else. Uh, don't manage to pen the jab heavy, shouldn't, shouldn't say jab, pardon me. And uh, who shall we go for? Oho is uh, angled a little bit awkwardly. Definitely pen the M6, no problem. And again, you know, this, like I said, the alpha is so huge, I shave off 80% of his hit points, we're good to go. KV3 here, can we get a shot into him? always the possibility of you know the shot going into the, the tracks and there we go and we set in the engine on fire to boot oh ho again I've yet to kind of suss out the Japanese heavies where to hit where to pen I know the little you know the commanders hatches R2D2 hatches up front but at the same time I believe he's kind of angled it's not gonna work you know so anyhow I do get lit up here I'm thinking it was the, the medium down below, I'm not sure. Combined with the fact that, you know, I blasted my 150mm. That's what I'm thinking. E25 gets a little bit too daring there. He gets taken out for his mistake. Again, trying to pen the Oho. Again, he's just angled. We're attempting to use heat here on him at the same time. I know the mechanics of heat and I know you know even heat doesn't like angled armor so is he gonna work and but I do manage to get lucky there I do manage to pen him absolutely it's like 300 plus pen on the heat so you know sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work can we finish him off and there you go there you go like I mentioned, sometimes it works, sometimes it just doesn't. And a little light tank has managed to push up behind myself. And an SU12244, but he, you know, he's he's going to keep me continuously lit up here, you know, for quite a while. And, uh, and this is the reason why I switched to the compass map. Uh, because I was fully expecting to come into, you know, close quarters with other tanks in this area you know or on the ridge line in front of me as well and uh, but yeah like I, I mentioned this before I, I like to switch when, when there's tanks you know in close vicinity to, to my tank I like to switch to the the compass map and again the the, the, the danger here is not the SU12244 the danger here is artillery you know where are they placed can they get shots on me most probably they can <coughs> um, with this tank they just it's so easy to pen the splash etc etc it's just it's such a danger it's such a big massive danger so you need to be fully aware of where you position your tank how long you're exposing yourself for etc etc but pretty decent game so far. We've managed to get, uh, you know, six pens and one kill. Panther, yes, we can. Easy. Nice little snapshot there. Managed to get 748 damage as well. So, seven decent pens and and uh, two kills. So, good to go. 
Now we're going to poke this ridge line. Thankfully, I think the SU-12244 is gone now. We're going to poke this ridge line. We're kind of going into scout mode here, basically. And, uh, and we see a KV-5. And I, I was risking, you know, quite a bit there. You know, that was kind of pushing my luck there. I was surprised I didn't get penned. But now I've kind of made my presence known to th these gentlemen uh, um, beyond this ridge line. There's no way I'm going to repeat that. You know, there's no way I'm going to repeat that. I'm not a scout tank, but I'm kind of acting like a scout tank. Type 59, the same thing as the SU 12244. Uh, he, he just can't do nothing to me apart from keep me lit up. But I can do the same to him, vice versa. Uh, he doesn't have the gun depression as. Uh, just like the SU-12244 so there's not much he can do except for keep me lit up for his artillery so but a uh, pretty decent game so far absolutely nice damage and you can see the KV-5 has rolled up kind of same thing as the Type 59 and there's another heavy as well so there's quite a few tanks here and Artie finally starts taking pot shots at me. Finally starts taking pot shots. Tiger, again, I'm risking it. You know? so I, was, I was kind of expecting to lose my uh, my six cents. Yeah, I switched back to standard ammo. Kind of a little bit of a heat ammo spam there. The, the situation got a bit dicey, and I forgot to switch back to standard for the side of the tiger. Definitely, 100%, you know, you don't need heat. Absolutely, 100%. And right now, everybody's putting up a really decent fight. You know, these, these tanks here are working this ridge line. They're trying to place shots onto my compadres who are up in the hills. And everybody's, yeah. Oh, ho, oh, knee, pardon me. I'm just trying to, you know work on me but and I'm trying to return fire and I managed to just place a shot in the nick of time and again the pretty decent damage you know 500 plus a lot of the greens uh, the reds just trying to get me out of this position you know and you can see the damage ribbons they really are stacking up they do they you know I was expecting this to be a pretty high damage game. Now I'm not going to risk it. I, you know, I, I don't know where the TD is, the enemy TD. Artillery is still in play. And nah, you know. IS, this IS is just, uh, I, I take the shot early and I wouldn't have made it if I had zoomed in. He would have ducked behind that. And that doom. And I get taken out for my troubles. Possibly maybe he was looking at my tracers. I haven't got a clue, but um, a very, very decent game, nonetheless, and uh, yeah, I mean, so l a little bit of scouting there, a little bit of, you know, you always see mediums in this position, taking pot shots, luckily for me, there were no mediums, uh, you know, in my position to kind of shove me out the way, because I would have allowed, if there was a medium uh, in that position, I would have kind of given him that space that's parking space so to speak because to me you know mediums should be in that position they get first dibs first priority for that position yeah because they got gun depression quick firing etc etc but nobody took that position apart from that e25 but he died straight away so i decided okay perfect this is perfect for me my high camo my big massive derpy gun perfect and i was just left alone until the reds showed up and they just started lighting me up, lighting me up, lighting me up and eventually Artie got lucky and uh, managed to take me out. But anyhow, moving on to the end of the game, it, as you can see, it actually turns out to be a loss. But, you know, still, we managed to secure, um, actually this is my highest damage so far in this tank, is six points. 3k damage not as much XP as in the previous game possibly maybe because I was 
brawling more, you know, etc., etc. But um, but nonetheless, a fantastic high damage game, and uh, yeah, my best damage so far. And keep in mind, I'm not playing this tank religiously. I'm not playing it non-stop. I just really wanted to revisit the Borsig, and I really wanted to revisit the Borsig uh, with the appropriate skills and perks you know I didn't want to start replaying the tank until I had the proper uh, skills and perks needed to play in this tank you know the ones that I mentioned in the beginning of the vid and uh, and this is me just I think total time since you know uh, since I started replaying this tank uh, I think it's only been a couple of hours I'd say worth all couple of hours worth of battles and that's it and um, yeah it's pretty OP <laughs> it's pretty broken it's pretty it's, it's a lot of fun so anyhow I hope you guys enjoyed um, I'm kind of worn out take it easy Adios, muchachos.